so guys in this video i'm gonna create a stylus character head model so here i took a dynamic spear and you can see i'm gonna create this uh, this head basically i'll follow that head um, i may not do that exactly so here i'm using move brush to get the overall shape uh, the the egg shape of the head here i'm doing the skull okay here you can see from this angle it's basically an egg and the point of the egg is towards the front and then the um, white part towards back and the face basically hangs uh, on the front side so getting this basic shape from the side profile is very crucial so here i'm doing the neck just raise that here we are using dynamic so we can just drag it and create a re no recreate the uh, topology or the density of the polygons that's why dynamics is very easy to work with uh, if you are sketching the model if you just block the model and uh, then dynamics is a good choice so here you can see i'm trying to get that skull shape and the overall profile the basic contour line of the head and if you are creating a male then you can slant the forehead if you are creating a girl or female the forehead comes forward a little bit so that is that defines that makes the face more curly or omen like here kind of putting all those features placement area kind of blocking those things the sockets and the mouth muzzle the kind of bulginess on the mouth area and we can mask and reverse the mask to kind of pull the ear out out from the shape okay so again stay on this stage and try to get the overall form proportion shapes right Here you can see the bottom part of the nose ear and the skull are on exactly on the same line so that's a good landmark and you can see we can just adjust that again the nose and the ear bottom and the skull bottom matches and here you can see the peak point is a little bit backward uh, not at the center you can check the you know, head from the top view and you should get this shape the head should narrow towards the front and then wider towards the back the skull is like that so it's again an egg shape it's not exactly an oval or kind of circle it's an egg shape okay so and from the front view we can have that kind of peak that uh, the peak point again it's not exactly like a curve uh, it's a peak point it's kind of a triangle shape and from the side profile we have this the two main point and uh, the furthest point is there and then the upper one is the highest point and I'm talking about these basic shapes, the primary shapes here. So you're trying to you know, get that overall shape right. Nothing you know, fancy, simple. Here I'm kind of going to extend that part and create that kind of little bit chest part. Not the chest part, the clavicle and the neck part basically because i don't i don't like to you know do a model till the base of the neck i i want to create the model a little bit down covering that because i would love to do the clavicle and those stuff here i'm kind of getting uh, putting that impression of the sternocloid mastoidus muscle which comes from behind the ear and here is the clavicle uh, in this particular sculpt i'm not going to detail this stuff and put these muscles and make those very prominent looking i'm not gonna do that because uh, here we are creating a stylized model so i'm gonna avoid any kind of realistic thing and any kind of very detailed kind of muscles look so we want a kind of stylized look simple soft smooth and still it should have all those anatomical forms we can even kind of omit few things but again i'm not going to define those muscles here trying to get the eyes 
eye area and get that bulginess of the eye as if the eyes are closed inside there okay let's add just the placement here i'm gonna create that eye shape and append a spear as the eyeball so i just append a spear for the eyeball and let's put that and then i'll draw and cut out that eye area i'll i'll make her open her eyes looking at the model from you know, different views helps because the model should look good from any views so here i'm drawing the eye area using the damn standard brush kind of cut out that area so that we can see the eyeball inside and here you can see there should be five eye gap and one eye gap between the two eyes so we need to keep maintain that thing but because we are creating a stylized character uh, that might that rule might not be applied and here you can see uh, the upper eyelid always stays forward than the lower eyelid so it's you should see this kind of an angle from the side view it should not be on a straight line vertically it should be on an angle so upper eyelid should come forward further than the lower eyelid and you can see i just adjusted uh, reposition the eyeball a little bit so this this kind of things are very crucial here i mirrored the eyeball to the other side using soft tool master uh, mirror option okay let's put some volume to the nose the nose is very stylized in this situation in this case and we can see this curve in our concave shape so this is the concave shape and this is the car, uh, convex shape so when you are trying to create a cute looking character and especially especially you are creating a girl you would like to have a concave shape rather than a convex shape so concave shape creates uh, makes the character look more cute and childish because child has that kind of nose they have concave shape and uh, this angle of the nose is also very important you can see this angle the bottom angle and child always have this kind of angle and if you put this your character will look more cute and childish uh, because we are creating a good looking stylized cute girl we need to have this stuff and here you can see this is the frontal eminence that kind of balls out shape as if a spear is coming out of the skull so that is uh, that needs to be there especially on girls and here i'm gonna put the leap opening line and trying to get that corner again there is a rule or guideline that the corner needs to be exactly on the eye center area uh, but again again it varies so here i'm gonna putting a little bit of volume to the upper area and putting this line and smoothing everything because here we are sketching i'm not kind of committing to any shape at this stage and don't love your work at this stage i mean uh, don't stick to what you have done already just change it and here you can see uh, the gap between the bottom nose bottom the bottom of the nose and the lower lip is one eye gap if you rotate the eye and you put so th that is a realistic proportion or position guideline but again we are creating a stylized character but so here i'm going you know, to checking the silhouette if you to if you uh, check the matcap skin material and put black color you can see this silhouette on the view if you are using 2020 g brush 2020 then you can see the silhouette view you can see the upper uh, lip is forward and then the lower lip it's exactly like eyeball uh, sorry the eyelid and you should have this kind of angle again a guideline uh, we should always start with a good guideline and then we can uh, change the model according to the concept if the concept says the lower lip is coming out then the upper lip then we need to do that but again we should start with the proper guideline so you're defining the year and the year would be semi-realistic it's it's not going to be fully realistic and every stylized character has its own stylization some characters tends to have sharp edges then other character stylish character and sometimes uh, 
uh, are very realist kind of semi realistic kind of stuff so stylized character sculpting doesn't mean a particular style so there are different styles we need to follow that particular style uh, from the concept we need to see the concept properly and then follow the stylization of it uh, this character has more kind of soft area except the nose we have a sharp edges at the nose here i'm putting the cheekbone uh, the zygomatic bone area so from the side view from the profile view we can see the profile the silhouette and the chin uh, on girls tends to be more pointed than uh, men defining the eye brow area we don't have a lot of polygons so i'm going to increase the polygons resolution here a little bit so that i can define it more as i have already blocked the basic shapes and from this bottom angle we need to adjust the eye a skin eye leads so they should exactly sit on the spear on the eyeball you're using damp standard with holding alt to push uh, pull out Here you can see the corner of the eyes tends to be angled like this especially on girls so both the corners the outside corners tends to you know stays up a little bit and when when we are creating a eye we need to change this shape check this shape the peak point on the upper curve is kind of towards the center of the head and then the lower curve is kind of going outside so it's not exactly a mirror effect you can see the shape there the upper curve's peak point is more closer to the head or the nose defining that uh, shape here and as you can see the upper eyelid always overlap the lower eyelid putting that lower shape a little bit you can see that shape here and obviously it's very kind of uh, simplified uh, demonstration but you can uh, get the point you I, I guess you get the point so that shape on the eye is very important otherwise it's not gonna look like an eye so here defining this line helps to you know see that thickness on that eyelid and as you can notice i'm not working on a particular features and kind of completing it and then going to a different features i'm not working that like that i'm working overall i'm moving from a features to another features uh, kind of you know, working on the same trying to create a same detail label everywhere and here you can see trying to get create that lip line and then this this kind of center v shape so we can put some volume to the lower lip it was flat it needs to have a little bit fullness to the lip a uh, lip, lip i think every features are important uh, especially lip is very important when you are creating a good looking girl uh, lips uh, lips is very important so spend a little bit more time on lips creating that good looking lip So what I notice is the eye needs to be a little bit bigger. So this is again a proportion check. When you are creating a stylized character, most of the times the eyes are a little bit bigger than realistic. So that makes the character looks more beautiful and cute and stylized. So make sure your proportions are right, not just the details. So always look for bigger proportion, even, even if you are kind of detailing the skin level details or even if you are done with the character always look for uh, the bigger proportion like the the art uh, like i did check the eye shape the overall size according to the head and here i'm moving the lip a little bit so that the again you need to check the gap between the nose and the upper lip 
that gap needs to be exactly uh, right otherwise it's gonna look like a different character and different uh, no good looking character tends to have a kind of less gap between the nose and the upper lip here i'm changing this modifier to 95 if you go to brush and go to uh, the modifier settings and increase that uh, on the pinch brush we can pull and push with the pinch brush usually pinch brush kind of uh, create pinching effect and sharp edges but we can use pinch brush to sculpt as well here putting that kind of um, the temporal line defining this brow area a little bit repositioning the ear it was a little bit bigger side so I uh, I made it a little bit small and adjusted the overall shape looking the head from this profile angle to check the profile side and again this is smiling a little bit Again, defining that jawline, the bottom part of the jawline. Here, I'm not trying to do the exact concept model. I mean, I'm not trying to get that portrait done. Uh, I'm just creating. I'm you looking at that reference and doing it. I'm not trying to match it fully. And if I want to match it fully, I may need a little bit more time and i need to look the concept very carefully so here you can see that that kind of defined line sometimes stylization depends on the actual anatomy so uh, sometimes they just kind of exaggerate the existing detail if uh, we have some kind of form uh, on the stylized model they just exaggerate that so that's why uh, even if you love stylized modeling you need to learn anatomy so that you know what what is already there and so that you can exaggerate that if you don't know what's there then you cannot exaggerate anything and your stylized model is not going to look good so you cannot avoid learning anatomy that's what i'm trying to you know tell you here not adjusting the overall shape the nodes from the profile angle and adjusting this nodes a cute little nodes never afraid to change your model i mean um, you may love your lip i mean your sculpt character's lip but if you find something on the concept then don't afraid to change it change it smooth and delete the no, recreate it i mean don't uh, get attached to your work that's a good advice from even senior guys so uh, don't get attached to your model always be ready to change it and or recreate it so that that way you can um, improve it basically here i'm trying to get that overall eye uh, sorry the lip is correct uh, kind of defining the lip edge uh, because here we are creating a stylized character we can refine and have a little bit sharp lip edge but on realistic we don't have this kind of sharp edge uh, on anywhere on the face but on uh, stylish character most of the time um, I have seen they have kind of sharp edges no, adjusting the chin area properly and I am putting that kind of bulginess to the iris area the eye, eye is not a simple spear the iris the color part of the eye tends to have a uh, bulge bulginess so we can use standard brush and then kind of you know pull that out 
so that it can catch, catch the specular and those stop. Just looking at the model from different angle and so that I can see some problem and I can fix those. Okay, just divide that I and here I can, uh, here I'm using toy plastic and fill that more material to the eye. Basically, I'm trying to paint it. And here you can see with the standard brush, I just choose RGB and then I'm going to create a green eye. So I chose a dark green color and let's choose a little bit desaturated green and then fill that to the iris area, the color part of the eye so with the standard brush and RGB settings so just paint that and then uh, i'm going to put this black pupil pupil i always mispronounce that i actually mispronounce a lot of words i'm trying to learn it so here i'm i'm putting a light tone to this area which uh, will create a kind of light bounce effect or the light is going inside the iris that kind of effect and putting dark color shading to the upper area and here I'm trying to get that details in the uh, iris so just you know, creating some dark line and light color lines creating a little bit uh, strokes kind of effect and then I'm gonna put a pink tone to this corners of the eyeball uh, like the blots and those stuff it's not fully white so you have this kind of reddish tone on these areas and we have some veins so you can create those veins using this brush standard brush just create something like we're creating a leafless tree something like that And on this model, I'm going to adjust the. Still, I'm looking at the eye shape. Because on stylized character, eye is very important. Eye is very important on any character you do. But especially on stylized character, because the eye is, is a little bit stylized here. here. I'm trying to create the eyelashes. And again, on stylized characters we tend to create the eyelashes on geometry i mean like a patch or like a simple model so i just mask that and then extract that shape and then here i'm trying to get that overall shape that kind of uh, simple blocking stylized eyelash eyelashes shape so the eyelashes is more long towards the outside of the eye I mean the towards the con outside corner and it's smaller uh, towards the inside of the eye just feel a dark color to that iris and I'm gonna try to because I masked it and then I kind of extract it the shape is a little bit weird and I need to kind of define it so that it looks clean you don't have a lot of polygons so i'm gonna increase the polygons a little bit i know it looks good it looks like hair strands but i'm gonna you know, increase the resolution we need to avoid this kind of wobbliness especially on stylish character stylish character needs to be very very smooth and defined there shouldn't be any kind of wobbliness so it should be very very defined every shape needs to be there on purpose so no try to avoid this kind of wobbliness try to create clean looking models on this side you can see uh, we need to turn on back face masking if you go to brush and masking you need to turn on back face masking 
as otherwise it's going to affect the other side when we are working with a simple uh, thin piece so it can affect the other side here i just turn on the aqua curve you can go to brush and curve and then turn on aqua curve which will help you to uh, move uh, and create point kind of shape as you can see i'm spending a little bit time on this part because i think this is very important and i'm not getting it right so i keep trying to get that and the lower eyelash is uh, eyelashes are smaller than the upper one and uh, they have less density i mean less hair so we can create a simple small small eyelashes here trying to get that shape sometimes it's it's a little bit tricky uh, in that situation just decrease the dynamic resolution so that you don't have to kind of work with a lot of polygons and then adjust the overall shape when you have a lot of polygons it's difficult to adjust the basic bigger shapes so in that kind of situation we need to decrease the resolution and then adjust the overall shape once you are happy with that we can increase it and increase the resolution and define the model And you should must check this from the side angle you can see i don't like the side angle it should go back and like in like a cat eye look for uh, wobbliness and try to correct those by using the move tool and smooth brush I think it's uh, looking better now better than before so putting a dark uh, color tone to that okay here i'm masking uh, the head to create the hair so again the hair would be stylized and i'll kind of sculpt it uh, from a different uh, from a single piece so i'm going to extract the shape and then we're going to sculpt on top of that and create the hair so let's extract give some thickness and accept it okay here you can see i had the mask uh, on that eyelashes so i got that you need to recreate that so i turned on dynamics on the hair and here i'm gonna put some volume first try to get the overall volume of the hair and then we are going to you know, draw the overall hair kind of uh, hair uh, spikes so here i can use move brush with aqua curve turned on but there is a better brush for that we can use snake hook brush and this brush will help us kind of create this kind of spikes and because i am using dynamics i'm i don't have any worry i can just um, control and drag to create the topology again and i i would have a lot of polygons on that kind of stretched area here you can see i'm stretching uh, using the snake hook brush and try to get that kind of hair spikes and then i'm gonna 
recreate the dynamics by holding control and drag outside and then we're gonna sculpt and define this uh, this thing here you can see I just uh, recreate that dynamics using holding control and drag outside and then I'm using my damn standard bros to define the separation line and uh, making all those kind of all those spikes unique and defined looking so here I'm using uh, clay tube to fill those kind of uh, carved in areas so clay tube is a great brush to do that kind of fill uh, fill kind of stuff if there's a dent it's gonna fill it easily and using damp standard uh, damp standard brush holding alt uh, that that uh, technique creates that kind of hard edge or sharp corner uh, facet changing edge and also using move brush to get the flow of the uh, strap uh, the flow of the or the i've always forgot to you know tell that those are the spikes because the flow is not there the hair flow needs to be there On most of the stylish characters we use this this kind of hair uh, sculpting method I mean we sculpt the hair and create a kind of hard edge and simplified hair uh, look but it depends these days people also use x chain and create realistic kind of hair on stylized model so that's another that gives another look and feel and it's up to you on your pipeline but I have always did this kind of hair on stylish character on in my studio so you're trying to create those kind of hair clumps look looks I'm not creating every single hair here we are creating hair clumps so the group of hair basically if I if I try to create every single hair I'd be mad and I'll I'll not be able to finish it As you can see it's very rough we have we don't have a lot of polygons and um, and I ha I intently have this kind of uh, low poly uh, low polygons here because I'm still blocking all those stuff we need to look at the hair from the top angle as well Here I'm, here I'm gonna create that nose uh, ornament, the little uh, nose piece there. So extracted and then extracted that piece. Simple piece there. Here I try to paint that. So here I fill the matcap skin on the head and then choose choose an a little bit yellow or tint and fill that on the forehead. So we have different tone on our face. We have yellowish tone on the forehead and then reddish tone on the cheek bone area and the cheek area and even on the eye line and then the nose area. So the nose deep, the cheek bone and the cheek. Uh, areas tends to have a little bit ready stone because of the all all those blots there so here i'm going to paint the leaf as well with a little bit pink case or ready stone i don't want to put any dark tone here so let's put a little bit pink tone okay
so i'm putting a little bit reddish stone to the tip of the nose and then also ear so again the forehead uh, tends to have yellow tint and then the middle part of the face the ear the nose and then the cheekbone tends to have a reddish stone uh, and the lower jaw part tends to have a little bit bluish so gray stone on male character that that would be a little bit prominent uh, because of the beard and the hair but on a female character we can have still the skin color but we can have a little bit bluish a little bit gray bluish tone still looking at the overall basic shapes and here i'm going to define the ear a little bit so it's kind of undefined uh, compared to the face using my damp standard and inflat brush to inflat those areas and to inflat in and uh, this kind of shapes and define this helix line so inflat brush is a great brush at this particular area and to create this kind of shape of the ear So I'm keeping that ear a little bit realistic I mean a little bit more organic style here I'm masking it to create the dress the cloth I'm not gonna do any crazy things there just extracting and uh, leave it like that I'm gonna extract that shape and gonna co you know, feel a color to that area maybe blue a little bit blue tone because it's gonna complement with the skin the skin has a little bit yellow color so blue is a complementary color of yellow color so it's gonna look more beautiful and colorful saving is a great thing i i saved the model first time so you should you shouldn't do this you should save your file from the starting trying to get a good color for the hair i'm a little bit confused so people on um, ask me sometimes if uh, they want to create stylized characters and if they want to become a i mean they ask me whether they should focus on stylized character or realistic characters so what i would say is focus on both uh, personally i try to um, become better at both both end realistic and stylized character because when you are working when you are working at a production house you may get a stylish character model as an assignment or maybe a realistic character and you can do both most of the people can do both uh, they can do both so uh, when you can do both you are a good asset to the company so here i'm masking this eyebrow area and i'm gonna extract it as a separate piece again because we are creating a stylish character we can have this kind of stuff So again try to become if you are good at realistic then you can be good at stylized characters so extracting that that shape and let's use polish by features to polish this borderline let's put some volume to the eyebrow So extracting is a good technique, but uh, again, uh, the demerit of it is you get a kind of warm, wobbly model, and then we need to you know, adjust it and you need to clean that stuff.
okay so i i guess you like the model here i'm gonna create the iconia at the tier dock that's the tier dock a little part so mask that and then extract that let's turn on dynamics so that we can sculpt freely and i'm gonna inflat inflat it so it's, it has basically two parts one a ball kind of shape towards the corner of the eye and then we have a kind of um eyelid kind of shape i mean one bar or tube kind of shape two shape one spear one tube so this is the spear and then behind that there will be the kind of tube like shape So this little part uh, helps uh, to improve or increase the realism, the believability. Even though you are creating a stylized character, you can have this kind of realistic elements. trying to define the the edges of those uh, spikes sometimes we also I used to do this uh, this hair uh, strands or the hair spikes separate pieces as separate object and then put those and compose it and create the overall hairstyle. Uh, we also do that and sometimes we do this. We just sculpt that from a single shape. And if you are doing this uh, technique, then you must spend some time to refine the shapes and avoid this kind of wobbliness because um, this kind of techniques uh, is a little bit hard uh, to get a you know, clean shape because of you no know, it's a single complex shape and we need to refine using smooth brush and trim dynamic brush helps we can use trim dynamic and trim the sides and the upper areas and we can even keep this kind of patchy looking spot after using the trim dynamic brush we can keep that because again that makes the hair look more stylized and this hair uh, part is gonna take most of the, uh, the longest time so I'm not gonna cover the all the part I think so it's simple thing we need to use this process and then do the stops there is nothing kind of you no know, tricks and techniques here and here you can see i'm using my damn standard to create some brush or to create some impression of the clump uh, you no know, the gap or the hairs So here I'm gonna fast forward it and skip skip the hair part. You can see I'm gonna do the same thing um, on the entire head on the entire hair. Okay, here I'm done with the with that hair part. I obviously I didn't finish it fully, but here try to try to put some blotchiness or spots on the face using the brush alpha so we have a lot of kind of spots uh, alpha we can use on the face and i'm trying to get a good color for the hair so i may use the concept color so that's a little bit 
ये लाइट येलो इस कलर आई थिंक आई लाइक द प्रीवियस कलर द कैंड ऑफ डार्क रेड कैंड ऑफ कलर बट अगेन यू कैन एक्सपेरिमेंट एंड आई थिंक आई एम गो ना गो इथ दिस दिस कैंड ऑफ कलर लाइक द कॉन्सेप्ट so guys hope you like like the model and hope you learn something from this tutorial i also make premium courses and cover all the topics um, from you know, starting to the end i mean i create the whole model real time and if you would like to check those out please check my udemy links i'll put that in the description i have some best seller courses you may find those helpful and i think i'm done with this character i think i'm going to go with this yellow maybe let's save it and i'm going to create a spear and for for the thumbnail image of course so i want to i want you to see that i have done this model from a spear okay let's save it thank you very much for watching please subscribe my channel hit the bell icon uh, so that you don't miss anything thank you very much bye bye